Louis Charles de la Motte Ango, Vicomte de Fleurs, the 12th of June 1754 to the 22nd of July 1794, joined the French Royal Army and rose in rank to become a general officer in the French Revolutionary Wars. After serving in the Austrian Netherlands, he was appointed to command the Army of the Eastern Pyrenees. His army suffered several defeats in May and June 1793, but he rallied his troops to win a defensive victory at the Battle of Perpignan in July. The all-powerful representatives on mission arrested him in August 1793 for a minor setback and sent him to Paris under arrest. The Committee of Public Safety executed him by guillotine on trumped-up charges in the last days of the Reign of Terror. De Fleurs is one of the names inscribed under the Arc de Triomphe. Early career De Fleurs was born into a noble family in Paris on 12 June 1754. His parents were Ange Hyacinthe Ango de la Motte Ango, Comte de Fleurs and Marie Madeleine Charlotte de Chertomp de Soy, Baroness de Roe De Fleurs enlisted in a cavalry regiment at a very early age. He embraced the French Revolution and became a maréchal de camp in 1791. At the direction of General Charles-François Dumouriez, de Fleurs established the camp of Maulda in 1792 and was badly wounded defending it. After recovering, he joined Dumouriez's invasion of Belgium as a division commander in 1792. On 6 November 1792 he commanded the reserve of the left wing at the Battle of Gemaps. Under his command were two squadrons of mounted national gendarmes and a number of grenadier battalions. The French defeat at the Battle of Nierwinden on 18 March 1793, left de Fleurs commanding an isolated garrison at Breda. After a brief siege, he surrendered the place and was allowed to march out with the honours of war on 3 April. <laughs> war of the Pyrenees On 14 May General of Division de Fleurs assumed command of the Army of the Eastern Pyrenees. The War of the Pyrenees had opened badly for the French. The Spanish Army of Catalonia under Captain General Antonio Ricardos invaded France on 17 April with 4,500 men and routed the 400-man garrison of saint laurent de Sertens. Three days later, the Spanish force fell upon the 1,800 French defenders of Serre. The French were defeated with losses of 100 to 200 killed, wounded, and missing. In addition, 200 soldiers drowned in the Tech River trying to swim to safety. Ricardo's reported losing only 17 men wounded. On the 19th of May, Ricardo's with 7,000 troops advanced on De Fleur's camp of Mas Deu, a group of medieval era buildings established by the Knights Templar. In the Battle of Mas Deu, the French suffered losses of 150 killed, 280 wounded, three six-pound cannons, and six ammunition wagons. The Spanish lost 34 killed and an unknown number wounded. De Fleurs fell back to the fortress of Perpignan where a battalion of National Guard mutinied and had to be disbanded. Rather than pursue his beaten enemy, Ricardos turned back to invest the Fort de Bellegarde. The powerful Belgarde fortress guarded the Le Perthus Pass at 300 metres 984 feet altitude on the main road between Barcelona and Perpignan. De Fleurs tried to relieve the garrison without success, including an attempt by 3,350 men to escort a supply convoy through the siege lines on 29 May. While the Spanish army was preoccupied with the siege, de Fleurs drove another enemy force away from the port of Collioure. The siege of Belgarde ended on the 24th of June with a French surrender. After the fall of Belgarde, De Fleurs began arming the local farmers. Ricardo's wrote a letter on the 3rd of July protesting this and threatening to hang any civilian caught with arms. De Fleurs replied that all Frenchmen were soldiers and that their only uniform was the tricolor cockade. He also promised to retaliate if the Spanish began shooting civilians. De Fleurs drilled his troops so that they might fight the Spanish regulars on more equal terms. He also put his men to work building field fortifications around Perpignan and drafted experienced coastal artillerists to serve the guns in his redoubts. When the Spanish attacked again his efforts paid off. On the 17th of July, De Fleurs with 12,000 soldiers turned back an attack by Ricardos and 15,000 Spanish troops in the Battle of Perpignan. 
Historian Digby Smith called the Battle of Neil a French victory and gave French losses as 800 killed and wounded, plus one cannon captured. Smith listed Spanish casualties as only 31 killed, 131 wounded, and three captured. A second authority gave de Fleur's credit for good tactical leadership and stated that Spanish casualties numbered 1,000. When Ricardos sent five separate columns forward to envelop Perpignan, de Fleurs concentrated his main strength on the third column and defeated it. The fifth column turned back to assist the third column, but the French routed it as well to claim the victory. A third authority called the July Battle a French triumph, but gave no details. <laughs> Execution On 4 August 1793, a Spanish force captured Villefranche de Conflent in the Cerdanya. Though this was a relatively minor defeat, the representatives on mission accused de Fleurs of treason. Arrested and sent to prison in Paris, de Fleurs was brought before a revolutionary tribunal the following year. The court condemned him to die for communicating with enemies of the state and for taking part in the Luxembourg prison conspiracies, charges which one source called a «ridiculous pretext». De Fleurs went to the guillotine on the 22nd of July 1794. Five days later, the government fell, and Maximilien de Robespierre and his political allies quickly shared De Fleurs' fate. The name D E F L E R S is inscribed on column 33 of the Arc de Triomphe. De Fleurs was married to Maximilien Albertine Guillemine de Latre Neuville. The couple had two children: a daughter Guillemine Aline Ange, born in 1787, and a son Charles Amédée Guillon, who was born in 1789 and died in 1857. Guillemine married Alexander René de Safray, b. 1785, on the 18th of August 1828. Charles Amédée first married Anne Bernard Flavy de Froissart, 1835. His second wife was Countess Natalie Charlotte Ferdinande d'Ultramont 1818 to 1900. Equals equals notes. <laughs>